Welcome to Haunt Topic Radio, the podcast for haunters by haunters. These are our scary visions. Welcome back, Haunter, to another episode of Haunt Topic Radio. Man, it is hot today. End of August, throwing into September. Hope you guys are staying safe out there, getting your haunts done, hopefully wrapping things up for the haunt season. I don't know if you're a home haunter, you're probably just getting started. So, anyway, be safe. In this episode, we get Tessa Shaw on from my old stomping ground, The Dead Factory. She's an excellent special effects artist. We're going to go over quick things you can do in your haunt. Doesn't take a lot of time. Blood, gore, cuts, gashes, stuff like that. The podcast is a good listen. However, I'm going to let you in a little secret. I'm going to give you a link to a video. It'll take you right to the video. Hauntertoolbox.com forward slash SFX. Like special effects. So that's Hauntertoolbox.com forward slash SFX. That will take you to this video as well. This was for one of our master classes. Tessa came in, showed her showed her stuff and how how she applies latex and paint and blood and scar wax and all kinds of stuff and tools and materials. Things you can use this season to get your actors ready or if you're an actor, stuff you can do on yourself. Stuff that'll take just a little bit of time, but big impact. Scare badge orders are going out, so if you guys are interested in scare badges for your actors, usually once you've got your team in place and you know approximately how many team members you're going to be, is a good time to order. All orders shipped within five to seven days at your mailbox. Let's roll into it. Our master class with Tessa Shaw from the Dead Factory Haunted House. So tonight we're going to be covering uh, simple techniques, blood, gore, trauma, stuff like that. Tessa works at the Dead Factory. She's been out there for how many years? Um, it's my 10th. 10th year. Um, when, I had, when I had Dead Factory, I asked Tessa if she wanted to come on and <laughs> she never left. So <laughs> she she fell in love with it. So, um, so I'm going to be sitting here under this camera. She's going to be working on me. Um, once again, I cannot see your comments on Facebook, but if you come over to Zoom... I can see your comments and I'll be able to answer your question. I'm going to be guiding her through a few things, asking a few questions along the way. If you guys have any questions, just type them in the chat box on Zoom where I can see them. Um, she has some pretty cool techniques. You don't need a lot of money to do it. It's, uh, very effective things. So yeah, we'll leave it at that. So ask your, ask your questions in the chat box and I'll get to them. Um, Perfect. Could you shut the door for me? Yes. Yeah, we're going to... Show us a show us a few of your um, things that you like to use and some of your your supplies. So there are things that are kind of essential, but are also very inexpensive and will last forever. Um, one of them, can you see that? Try Liquid that. latex. Um, there is no rhyme or reason to this. Any from Walmart, Spirit Halloween, Amazon does not matter. It is all the same thing. Um, it will all it all obviously is still latex. So making sure somebody's not allergic is imperative. But otherwise, they're they, the same. Yeah, they do have stuff like I think zombie skin, maybe one of those out there that is not latex, but it's kind of like forms like latex. So. Same concept, yeah. Okay. Another thing, um, spirit gum. This is, can we see? This is another thing that is pretty imperative to have, but it's also super cheap. I don't think this is more than 10 bucks, and this little tiny thing will last multiple seasons. Um, it's just adhesive, so it's going to stick things to the skin. A more advanced version would be like Prosaid is another adhesive you can do. I don't mess with Prosaid because this works just as well for me and what I do. So um, other things that may not seem like you have to have them, but you do are going to be simple things like Vaseline. I mean, that's something that if we're using latex, we're also using Vaseline, which I'll explain as well. Um, other things that I don't really feel like you need anything, any special brands or any special versions of is things like liquid blood. Of course, you're going to find some from different places. It's going to be more watery, some that's thicker, but it's really just kind of up to your taste how you like them. I like the thicker ones, but I mean, to be honest, Walmart's is fine. They didn't, they didn't last a little longer, don't they? They do last a lot longer, yeah. Less is more. Less is more with pretty much everything in special effects, in my opinion. Um, Some of the more advanced things in my kit are going to be like Ben Nye Scab Blood. Can we? I'm, yeah, the stuff 
lip is off. And... Um, my lid is off. I'm sorry. But for that's instance, what it, that's what it looks like. Gooey, gooey, gooey. Yes, it's very thick. It's not going to run. You can manipulate it really easily. Um, this is 6.7 ounces. And for me, even with some of the like the bigger, bigger trauma, I guess you could say on some of the actors. <laughs> Yeah. This is going to last at least a full season, if not more. This stuff's pretty, I mean, it's like a thick. It's very, very, very thick. It's like a thick, thick paste. So, uh, yes. So, just like that. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I like to play too. Um, this is one of those things which everybody's going to have their preference, but Ben Nye brand specifically, I don't ever want to use anything else. Ben Nye is wonderful. Um, you can only, I believe you can only order it through other dealers. I know you can get it off places like Amazon though. And there are other companies out there. Just do your own mm -hmm. shopping. Absolutely. But, but Ben and I have been using them for years. So yeah, that's just my personal preference. I've used others that are fine. I just stick with that one because I like it. Um, this is another Ben Nye because I'm a slave to them. Nose and scar wax. This is what I learned with to make cut and those sorts of things. 3D, 3D cuts, 3D holes, anything of that nature. There are tons and tons of brands of this. I like the Ben Nye version because it tends to be a little less sticky. It's all sticky, but this is heavier. Um, yeah, this is something else. I'm obviously scraping the bottom, but even this really small amount that's in here is going to last me many, many looks. So super tacky, super sticky, but it molds into the skin really well. Just takes some takes some time to learn with, of course, but... So does the Vaseline help break that yes. down? So that Vaseline what? serves one of two purposes for me. I think I can speak for most makeup artists. Um, Vaseline, I'm never working with scar wax without my hands covered in Vaseline because when we're pushing it into the skin like this, it's going to roll right off and stick to my finger I'm pushing with. Um, another reason, hair. Liquid latex, if you've ever used it, you know that if it gets on a brush, a shirt, you don't have that brush or shirt anymore. It's gone. Um, it acts like wax. If you put it on things like eyebrows or baby hairs, that sort of thing, you can plan on never seeing those hairs again either. And this acts as a really great barrier in between. So I will never not have Vaseline in my kit. Um, another thing, a little bit, a little bit cheaper and also lasts forever. Bruise wheels. This one's by Mayron. Again, this is my favorite brand for this specifically, but there are tons that work almost identically to this one. These are all the basic colors in a bruise that's the whole point but i use these for things other than bruises but this is how i make every single bruise on every single person people so what colors are there in there what is it so about? there's gonna be like this dark red they're all warm toned mm -hmm. um this dark red burgundy regular bright red yellow green obviously for you know infected quote right. unquote things this looks like black but it's actually like a dark navy blue like a dark purpley navy blue i guess like a deep bruise for yep. this look yep so it's kind of a paste, like it's kind of a, can you see that? It's kind of like a pasty, right. but then it blends really, really easily. Um, I use this for every single solitary look that I do. I can't think of a single look that I don't use a bruise wheel. I think these run between like 10, 15 bucks. And again, this will last me moons as long as I take good care of it, which I try to. This podcast episode sponsored by Scarret Badges. We always were looking for ideas to to get those actors to take it to the next level. I really want to do something that they can use more than just a meal or they can use more than just a that a boy, that a girl. They love this stuff, but it's not really promoting a haunter. And then I sit down, Scarab Badges comes out. That's when I realized this is amazing because not only is it giving them an attaboy, but it's also promoting them all year round and for to promote somebody to give somebody accolades all year round and have them be able to wear it on their shoulder with pride means a lot this right here says this is who nailed it on this day in this year for the rest of their life for the rest of their haunting life and that's what i really love about this product is you're able to give haunting to somebody an attaboy 365 days a year and that's so hats off to you guys i think this is a great product and i wish you the best of luck because it's awesome Get your scare badges at scarebadges.com. Can we talk about the coffee? Sure, yeah. So one of my favorite things to do, and we were just talking, I have no idea where I, I got this. I didn't come up with this on my own, but this is just regular ground coffee, like Folgers ground coffee. Um, this is the number one, my number one favorite way to make a burn effect, and it is so stinking easy. Um, it smells good. It smells amazing. It smells much better than the latex that you use with it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but... 
Um, basically, I and I'll show how, how to do that, but this is one of the main things we need for that. So yeah, other than, um, oh wait, sorry. Hey, your sponges? Yes, this is, this is another thing that I, I was gonna say can't live without, but can't do makeup without. This is a stipple sponge. I don't know if you can see, it's got these massive holes in it and it's super wiry and pokey. It feels almost like, um, what's that metal wool stuff? Oh yeah, like the steel old wool. Uh, steel wool. Right, almost, yeah. but it's a little softer. Um, this, when we dip it in, which I'll show you, of course, but yeah. when we dip it in thick blood, like the scab blood, it makes kind of a splatter effect. Mm -hmm. Can we see that? Okay. And that's something that you'll get more comfortable with as you do, but it looks much more natural than just flinging, flinging blood on something that you've worked really hard on. So this, I love these things and these are stupid cheap. They come in packs. They're easy to clean with alcohol. So, right. So do you use the the wedge sponges a lot or do I you do. so for um bruises alone i use mainly a small so like a small rounded brush like this guy can you see just a regular like a flat rounded brush and just regular makeup sponges from the drugstore um of course i mean they're made for blending so that's what that's what we use for that so you're able to kind of say one same but... ones you can just go buy at walmart yes i literally just... bought these at walmart right. for a couple bucks so these are obviously disposable so it's clean i use one on one actor throw it away get another one right um without double dipping yeah obviously. that's not a whole i mean you can get a you can get a thousand of them for Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, so. absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, another thing, all of the, these brushes that I use, this whole, sorry, well, minus yeah. that one, there's, I don't know, 10 or like 15 brushes in here. These are more than what I need to do regular looks. I usually use three or four of them. And these are maybe 10 to 15 bucks for all these on Amazon. These have lasted me probably four years. I think they're, they're on their, some of them are on their way out, but they're, but they've more than paid for themselves. Right. Uh, for how cheap they are. So, and how much I use them and how much I need them to do this. Right. So. Okay. Well, if you guys have any questions, please top them in the chat. Any questions about tools, utensils, things you need? How do you use like any alcohol for anything or? Um, there are so there are alcohol-based paints. Um, they are wonderful. I love them very much. They're going to be used for like hyper realism. So things you're really only going to see up close. Um, I love doing that kind of stuff in my spare time or in like sometimes in actors that are really like in your face in a well-lit area right otherwise i use a lot of like water-based paint instead um this has been well 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 loved <laughs> um it is cheaper you can put it around your eyes which alcohol-based paint you cannot for obvious reasons um and it it tends to be a lot more opaque or it can be depending on how much you dilute it with your water um you can see it a lot easier from a distance. So like the actors that are in the dark or, you know, in a prop, something like that, it's a lot right. better for, so. Okay. What do you want to, what do you want to do on my head? You want to cut me open? Do a cut? Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. So, um, Brian has no hair or I would be putting Vaseline <laughs> <laughs> on his hair. So like, if we ever do anything like anywhere near his eyebrows, so like, even if I were doing a cut around here, I would be coating his eyebrows with Vaseline. It's just not something that I like to mess with because it hurts real bad. And let's see here. What's some tricks about getting around your eye, people's eyes? What as far as on other like on actors? Yeah. So with that, I've noticed um, like a small brush is usually my way to go. This is not fun to like shove near somebody's eyeball, even though right. it's sometimes necessary. Mm -hmm. But water-based paint, I've gotten so much water-based paint in my eyes over the years, and I don't feel it. Uh, it's not painful at all. Right. You never want to put anything like latex or spirit gum near your eye. Um, of course, liquid latex is latex, and it has ammonia in it. So um, it's going to burn your eyes quite a bit. Right. So, a lot of water-based. These, the bruise wheels, I can speak for Mayron and probably all of them, but for sure this one, um, are very safe to put around your eyes. I get them all all in my eyes regularly not a concern that's another thing with blood um when i say like the liquid blood you use doesn't matter if you're going to be putting it around eyes and, or, or your mouth it needs to be eye and mouth safe um otherwise of course that's very dangerous but always like that getting that tooth decay stuff i know they sell that yes. like maron sells that too where you put it they do and like... krylon sells eye color so if you want your eyes to look like they're draining bleeding black oh. It's just like eye drops goes in painlessly like eye drops, but it's safe for your eyes, which like regular paint, of course, is not. So All right. wonderful. So I don't ever paint anything first. I always put down my like three dimensional sections first. Okay. Um, since we don't have to put any Vaseline, where do we want to go? Where can we sure. see? Sure. Yeah, right there. All right. 
Yeah. Cool. Um, I got a couple scars up there anyway. Right. <laughs> I know I got two. Right. Step one is going to be spirit gum for me always. Again, if you're using prosate or something like that, latex does work as an adhesive as well, but I've noticed it doesn't hold things on initially as well as spirit gum. This holds it in place. Latex comes later. So um, one thing about spirit gum specifically, it dries clear for one. For two, it's, I don't know if any of you have ever used eyelash glue, but it works in the same way as eyelash glue where you can't stick something on it right away. You either have to wait for it to get tacky or use a sponge or something stick and you'll feel it get tacky. Yeah. If I just put, if I were to just put the, um, sorry, the scar wax on immediately, it would not stick. So I use a lot of Vaseline on my hands. It was awful. Works great. <laughs> so I've already taken some of my scar wax and rolled it into these beautiful little snake. Oh. Um, one thing about scar wax, A, less is more. It's super intimidating to start with scar wax because it is kind of, it's very hard to kind of blend the first time you're trying. Um, I forget where I put that. <laughs> but the warmer it is, the better. So one thing I like to do is like put it either in front of a heater or my car vent in my pocket, something like that. Yeah, sometimes sometimes at the at the pond it's either cold or hot. Yeah. So if I forget to bring the scar wax inside overnight, we have a problem. The oh next yeah, day. it's like a nuke it. So for instance, like for this, all I did was roll out two very very thin. In fact, I probably could have made them thinner. Little snakes of scar wax. Um, they're stuck on there with that smear gum, which of course it's not industrial strength. It will move if I pull it, but it holds it in place for what I need to do. Um, the best tool for this, in my opinion, is your hands. You can use a spatula. You can use other stuff, but it just does not blend quite like your hands because your hands are warm and the heat melts and helps it blend in to his skin so this is kind of abrasive of course but i always start at the edges and start pushing down and it just kind of molds into the skin like that sorry i'm bad at talking while i do this so bear with me well, i'll talk so you're just kind of like feathering it in blending it in exactly because you're probably going to come up with maybe some makeup or something that to... gonna hide a lot of that if you yeah. don't see, if you do see so the blood will cover that exactly and yeah. some people also like to use like if i were doing this like for photos or something of that nature, I would spend a lot of time really blending this in really hard and then mashing it with like a foundation that matches your skin right? Um, or a paint color if I was painting the rest of your face. Um, For this, because hot makeup is typically a little bit more in your face, it's not as important because you're not going to see it for the blood splatter that I like to do anyway. But it's not hard to blend once you've got it stuck down. Um, If you have like a spat, I forgot my spatula and I feel real, real dumb. But if you get extra, you can kind of pry it off with the spatula so not a big deal um one thing that i like to do for cuts and such excuse me once i've got this on the edges you can see they look really round um i usually again don't know that i even brought one but would take like tweezers a spatula something sharp and kind of rough these edges up a little bit make it look really like uneven and jagged mm -hmm. and pointy kind of like that can, can we see that kind of does that make sense? Yeah. Um, cuts are not even. Yeah, it's, it's right. It's not, so, there's a difference between, between fake and making it realistic. Exactly. And one thing that I've had to learn, and like I learned it kicking and screaming because I want everything to be perfect, is that like cuts aren't perfect. If I were to actually take a knife and cut you right now, it would not look beautiful and straight. Um, imperfections or like kinks and creases, that looks more realistic in, in my opinion. Right, so. and like what gets me is like someone just splatters blood on their face. Okay, so what caused that? Where are the now, if you have an axe or something, or you you know you have sure. something with you in a costume. Okay. Sure, absolutely. But. So this is a trick that I like to do for hunts specifically, um, because you know actors are running around for four, five, six hours, sweating, drinking, doing all the thing, or you know drinking water. It's running everywhere, getting all the sweat everywhere. This scar wax does not like to stay on areas with a lot of motion so like cheeks eyebrows things like that one way you can get it to stick a whole lot better is going to be to cover it with latex um so that's what i'm going to do and it does not take much whatsoever so, so latex liquid latex goes on bright white and dries clear and that's how we know that it's dry um one thing about doing this specifically is putting latex over something does make blending your colors out a little harder so i like to keep it pretty like tight to the edges that i need to stick so like for this one for instance i'm going to put a little bit underneath the the scar wax that's going to hold it in place so it does not crack 
throughout the night because it does dry fairly solid. So yeah, it's bright white now. Looks silly right now. But when that's clear, we'll know that it's dry. Mm -hmm. I'll do some burns while that's drying. Yeah. Do you know what causes haunted attractions to shut down before they even get started? The top three roadblocks are lack of funding, lack of leadership, lack of resources. As a member of the Haunter's Toolbox, you get instant access to the tools you need to start and grow your own haunted attraction business. To get started, become a member at Haunter'sToolbox.com. So my favorite thing on the planet to do is burns. And again, I don't know where I learned this, but it's so easy. Um, you can cover a lot of ground with this. It makes a huge mess, which I'm going to try to not do in Brian's home. <laughs> but <laughs> I got a broom. It's fine. This is something that is undoubtedly going to stay on better than better than most most looks. So let's see. Where let's pick I... a spot. How's that? Does that sure. work? So what we're going to do for a burn, put down a layer of latex. And what I've noticed is very important with this is the shape. If you end up with hard lines of latex, you're going to end up with hard lines of burn, which is not natural. So, right. so for this, you use quite a lot of latex. So like, see how this is really pointy back here? Mm -hmm. I don't want that. So I want to blend that out some and make it a little more rounded, okay. if that makes any sense. I hope. This is one I've been saying less is more this whole time. Not the case with these. Lots of latex. And then immediately... Before that has had any chance to dry whatsoever, these are those coffee grounds. I'm literally just going to push the coffee grounds into the latex and cover as much as I physically can of the latex. I don't want to leave any on the ed any edges without latex on it. Good, maybe it'll soak into my skin and wake me up. That would be great. I wish it was that easy. <laughs> but so I'm trying not to make a huge mess here. It's fine. And the excess just wipes away. So we've got our coffee on there now immediately without any drying we're gonna do another layer of latex so right on top of the coffee more latex so it's, like, it's good because i know sometimes you were the only artist mm -hmm. who you might have had you mm -hmm. know 50 actors to get ready mm -hmm. and yeah. you were always boom 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 you know mm -hmm. some people would be doing their do their eyes some people would be doing their you know getting their hair all done up or whatever mm -hmm. you were so i'm sure you did this a lot where this was drying okay now i got you here and then so yes kind of for, like if you're the only person you now some haunts have is where it's they have lines this person just does this and this person just does latex this yes. person just does and so. there are of course pros and cons to that i stay busy all night but letting somebody dry while starting somebody else so like if you've noticed this has turned clear almost completely while i was doing this so now i'm going to work on this and this is going to dry at the same time so time management right. is really all it is but um one thing i do like to mention about the burns this is bright white right now um because of the coffee it's going to dry to like this really gross snot color when it's about halfway dry that's when we start we want to start messing with is that it. the smell you were talking about that's, the, that's the latex the smell. I, I smell yeah, it, it must be the chemical reaction between your zone yes lots of ammonia in that guy it's yeah. not fun to smell but it, it does it does its job it does the does the job absolutely um with so back to this bad boy this is all except for inside it's almost all completely dry normally i would let it let it dry completely but i can work around it now um with any cut there's going to be bruising and trauma to the outside so when i do when i do these it's important to me to focus on what's around it as well so it doesn't just look like a random cut with no no purpose or direction if right. that makes sense um so i always pull out this bad boy next you can probably tell i use more of these than anything else yep. um this i just feel like is the most natural color so this burgundy color what i do is paint not necessarily this part you can but i'll do that next the inside of the cut these little raised pieces and like had i had my tweezers or something that part that would be really manipulated and really like pokey this would all be dark on the edges just add a little bit of color kind of mm -hmm. makes it pop right it does and then i'm gonna drag the color down further but i'm gonna use something bigger so that's when i would use something like one of these to blend with because i have more areas to cover and more blending to do Brushes obviously don't blend these things as well as your hands or a sponge. There are some things that I, I will die on the hill that your fingers can blend more than anything else, but mm -hmm. in this case. So going around the edges, and this is something that doesn't have to be real neat necessarily, because we're going to be in. Is that the same color? Same color. Okay. Same color for now, but it's going to kind of imitate swelling and irritation. Um, one thing about using like these three-dimensional 
products like the scar wax it looks three-dimensional if you're up close but if you're not once it's on you really can't tell and you work really hard on it so the paint helps give it dimension so how would i go about taking this off later oh yeah absolutely so um scar wax which i'll sh i can show at the end it's okay. gonna peel off pretty much in one piece yeah um the everything else that's blended into the skin is gonna come off with regular makeup remover um coconut oil olive oil those kinds of things spirit gum there is an actual remover for it's like a clear solution when you're not using very much spirit gum it's not necessarily required but it usually comes with your spirit gum when you buy it so all right um, just the little bit that I use is not going to leave a residue. I, I did a cut all the way down my face last night, peeled it right off, used a makeup wipe, and I was ready to roll. So, um, okay. So, all intents and purposes, the red is done. Um, it looks nice and gross. One thing that I like to do is make things look infected. Um, the grosser, the better. Of course. So, I like the yellow. One thing with the yellow in these is it goes a really long way. A little bit goes such a long way. So, I'm just barely going to take any. Just barely. And go around kind of the outside edges. Because one thing with things like bruises, of course, when you see somebody with a bruise or a black eye, the deepest points of that injury that they got are going to be the darkest color. Everybody has seen a bruise heal. The outside is going to turn yellow first and then it's going to work its way in. Um, So I just, if I can keep it as real as possible, that's my goal. Yes. And I know when uh, you're working at the Death Factory, when you mm -hmm. do work at the Death Factory, we, mm -hmm. the people that are up close, cue line actors and stuff, yes. but we tended, we had a tendency to just do everybody because everybody wanted a realistic cut right right because it's super then cool you, then you have to yeah then you have to pick and choose what exactly your your actors are going to be you really need to really need a plan first yes to make sure everybody's kind of on on the same boat of what they're going to get so what we do um or what i've requested we we do is like on like orientation night or like our meeting night we will make a list of we'll go through the haunt as a team place everybody your name goes on a list with your with your room i at this haunt have been there for so long i know, you know like what rooms require what essentially so low lighting i'm going to spend like 60 seconds or less on your makeup if you're in a pitch black room with one red light um things like that i don't ever waste resources of you know any of this or time doing something like this that takes you know 15 minutes it's not long but it, when you only have a couple hours to get ready yeah. Um, I'm not going to do this on somebody that you're really not even going to see. Um, we'll do some quick, we'll do some quick stuff later. Just, yes, just absolutely. Splotches. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, oh, sorry, I'm losing things. Don't mind me. Nah. Um, as far as, so the inside of this hole, somebody asked me last year at the haunted house, why do you put black in it? Wounds aren't black. And I know that, but it adds dimension. So this is just water on a brush in my paint. Um, the less water you add, the darker your paint. So I didn't add very much water. If I'd added more water, this would be like clear. Mm -hmm. It'd be very translucent. I'm going to stay really close to the edges here and just fill it in on the bottom. That's what I always do too. I always use black. Yes. And you can use like a dark red or like a purple in all actuality, it's not going to make a massive difference, but yeah. it makes it nice and dark. That's how I like for this. It's a good look. base to put everything else against, too. Absolutely. So that's going to dry. Um, the, like you said, there are things like I'm going to be letting this dry while I'm giving somebody else two black eyes, and then I'm going to come back right. because there's one of me. And um, at our haunt, I'm the only one that does this type of thing typically. Um, my other makeup artist, she's really good at her airbrush. I am not. So um, this is stuff. Once you're, once you get the the feel for it, know what to do in what order. Something like this would take me like less than five minutes as a whole total. So right without teaching it, exactly and through it, exactly. And, and if I didn't have to stand here and let it dry, and I wasn't doing other things, so on and so forth. There's no method to making this dry faster with the exception of a hair dryer which does work um but when you have so many other things to do it's just not necessary for me right um that water-based paint dries really fast it's not shiny anymore which is how i know it's pretty much dry next thing we're going to use is my favorite thing of all which is the scab lid yeah um i'm gonna use the back of a paintbrush because that is what i realistically use 90 percent of the time <laughs> Um, spatulas help you get more precision, but I'm cheap. <laughs> and it, it was available. So it's like, it's hey, available oh. and it works. So um, this is one of those things where less is more. If you So this is going to be really, really, really stringy. Can we see how stringy it is? I can't find my hand. Yeah. Um, one thing, if you put it on as a string, it's staying as a string. So just word of the wise. What I do for things like this is I'm only going to physically put the scab blood 
inside the cut. I'm not going to put it all around and I'll explain why. And just, But this is nice and chunky. And again, it's three dimensional, which is what I think looks the best for something when we've already made it three dimensional everywhere else, if that makes sense. Yeah. If I ran upstairs right now, I thought they'd be freaking out. Yeah. She, but she knows what I'm doing. So. <laughs> um sometimes i will take like a like a string and just kind of like place it and boom it's gonna stay like that forever because that's what it's meant to do so it stays stays this consistency in the air too so it's gonna coagulate some it's gonna harden up a little bit um if i touched it right now it'd be on my finger but after right. probably 30 minutes it will harden to an extent um it's gonna stay through sweat so on so forth um but it's not going to be like rock solid like everything else to an extent will be. So um, this is where I use my stipple sponge because I couldn't do it without it. I don't typically have to go in and pick up more product for this. I mean it. This stuff lasts forever. I will dip this in what I've already done. And it serves two purposes. So one, it gets what I need on the brush. And two, it makes this really cool like jelly texture in there already. Then I will just take it and make my splatters here. Can't talk and think at the same time. <laughs> But yeah, it's kind of it's like a painter painter's favorite tool. Because realistically, if you were someone's going to hit you in the skull with an axe, there's going to be some splatter, right? Exactly, exactly. And like um, one of our actors, I do like a giant head wound on my dad, actually. Yeah. Um, and what I'll do for that one is I'll take scab blood and kind of build it up on the edges because there's always going to be more on the edges, and then fade the splatter down because. That's what would happen if we were to whack somebody with an axe. Mm -hmm. So I keep it thicker on the edges and looser on the, the far part. Ta-da! Brings it in. <laughs> oh! And there's your cut. Except where I messed it up. Hold on. Sorry. That was my fault. See the junk. See my brain. Perfect. It's wonderful. Looks good. <laughs> so if someone wanted to add like staples and string yes. or stuff like that. I know staples are kind of a, um, you know, some people say, well, you can get hurt with those. Mm -hmm. Granted, if someone's not knowing how to handle yep. their own, because you could bump your head and hurt and push a staple. And actually your staple head your head. And, right. Yeah. <laughs> you can use Absolutely. fake staples. You can, I've seen people just cut the tips off the staples off. So it's not as pointy. It's flat. Yep. Flatter. You know, um, you can put staples in there, string. So I've seen a lot of people use um, string, small pieces of cardboard, um, literally anything you have laying around that you can make that small rectangle shape. Yep. Paint it silver. Um, any like decent sized palette will have a silver paint in it. Even painting it white in a, in a low light situation, you're going to get the gist. Right. It's going to look like a staple. So um, that's definitely the safest way to go about it. But I, I like the real thing personally. But yeah. Too. But you just got another risk. You want to do something else over here? Or? Absolutely. This is actually drying. I need to finish it. That's all, okay. Um, so usually we would use for like a smaller section of this, I would use like a pair of regular tweezers. But this, now that it's dry, this is still drying. This is mostly dry. It is super, super durable. So it's so small. So it's ripping up. But if we take, I got to be really aggressive, my fingers and rip a hole in it. Mm -hmm. I like to do that. I have to get all up in your business to do it. That's fine. Peel some more I pieces. I volunteered myself. You did. You did. You seem to do it. You know what's coming. Yeah. And then, let's see, I'll do another one over here. I hope it's visible on camera. It will be once I paint it. But yeah, there's okay. like a hole right here, for instance, where you can see it's just his plain skin through. And there's a reason for that. Um, Another one. This, when you do it on a big enough area of someone's skin. So like one of the girls um, at our haunt, her entire face on one side is burned. Um, There's no skin showing through. Around her eyes, I just do paint and blood up close, like tight lined, mm -hmm. um, because obviously latex does not go in your eyes, typically. Um, but we rip a whole bunch of holes in this, because if you've seen a burn, what do burns do? They blister. Yeah. Right? That's the like, word. Yeah. I really couldn't think of. <laughs> um, blister and bust, fester and boils. Yep, and yep. Oils and so those burns blister and then the blisters pop and they leave these big old holes so um i do like all different sizes and this is another one where like imperfection is perfect because nobody's burns have perfect holes in them right um what i do at this point this is in so the way so yeah sorry. tweezers tweezers with like so much easier tweezers, tweezers out. um but i started doing it with my fingers that's how i started right doing it so um and it really helps you kind of get a feel you always have your fingers Absolutely. Once this has it has our holes in it, I'm going to come back to the hole part, but I'm going to start with my brood wheel again and take that same color that I can't get enough of and paint everything. It dries this nasty green color anyway because it's full of coffee. Right. Um. 
I'm going to, this part that I ripped up on accident, I'm going to glue down because it's driving me nuts. <laughs> um, but the green color alone is nasty, but I like to kind of set, set it with the red because it looks more. You're going back with some spirit gun. I am. I'm trying to tap, tap it the best I can. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure it'll happen. It will. People, so. It will. And um, if I were doing like the whole top of your head right now, that would not happen. <laughs> right. It's because I have such a small space that I did. I probably should have just given myself more room, but you get the gist. Okay. Um, so dark red, I like to go all over the green parts. If it shows through, that's fine. It looks nice and nasty and nastier is better. And like I said, I usually do this on like a really large scale, like somebody's entire side of their head. So at the edges... We end up blending this color around because, again, there's going to be blood on it. Yeah, because more of a, it's more realistic to see more of a, a more of a burn. Yes. Like, unless it was like individually, exactly. like, a, like a tool across your face, mm -hmm. being in a fire. Right. If somebody or... came out of like Freddy Krueger, they're not just going to have right. like a half dollar. Yeah, right. Look, you know, look at Freddy's face. I mean, there's all kinds of pox and. Yes dips and divots and maybe i'll have to do like a time lapse at some point of doing this on a large scale right uh because it, it looks pretty pretty neat um more the merrier where that's concerned i think scarret badges are one of the smartest things i've seen in the industry in a really long time scarret badges are basically either pins or embroidered patches uh kind of like merit badges as they are you know somewhat named after from boy scouts and and girl scouts and brownies and where after you've accomplished something you can wear the brag tag of the embroidered patch some haunts put them on jackets some put them on t-shirts some put them on uh, with the pins i've seen them put them on lanyards but the neat thing about them is they are very specific in what they are rewarding and they're haunt based images that reflect what's being rewarded it's retention it is bringing people back and it's actually giving your haunters your haunt performers the ability to share that they are haunt performers and oh really you're a you're a scare actor where do you do that? And then they will insert the name of your haunt right there. So it's also marketing. I've always been a big fan of Scarret Badges. I think they're great. So check them out, scarretbadges.com. No, it is, that is not a paid advertisement. That is just my recommendation. I think it's really cool. ScottSwinson.com So I've got my red on here. And what I do now, um, just like I put in the center of this one with the black, paint i'm going to do that again so thick black paint right in the holes there there you go and it's literally just for dimension because we're again we're going to put the nasty stuff on top of it in these holes so the coffee grounds gives it like a texture like it's that. all texture yes almost like a road rash exactly yep it's like a gross thick scab um you can you can pretty well see in there you can put it yeah it's it's very gross very rigid so that's not very much paint at all it'll take like a second to dry then back in with my favorite thing we're noticing a theme probably fresh skin <laughs> on everything i take the scab blood and put it right in the holes just like a dollop i like to keep it in the holes for the most part because otherwise the holes get overtaken doesn't look as real to me another thing that i really like doing sometimes is either in combination with the scab blood or instead of the scab blood mash up a banana yeah <laughs> and stick the banana in the holes it looks like pus it's super gross then if i get hungry later i can see right and everything's like, fine Whoa. and everything's fine so there we have it um usually i'll also just kind of depends on how i'm feeling that day but i'll take the stipple sponge and kind of add some blood around the top just sporadically. Um, another thing that works really well for burns, once you've got them colored how you want and like fully done, if you take some... Get a better angle at it there. It's like, it looks like it's a face. It does! I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little burnt. Um, if we take Vaseline and just like rub it all over, it looks glossy. Okay. I don't know if the camera really picks it up that well, but in person it does. Right. Um, that's... Try to shine it. I door. like the realism of that because it burns produce plasma the blisters burst mm -hmm. and everything is wet so you ever, ever add any yellow to it or pus or like i do um like... sometimes going over everything i'll just kind of make a menagerie of, of colors um I, that bruise wheel honestly i could just rub every color together and stick it on there and it would look great i love this because it is so easy you can't mess it up <laughs> um, right. any color you put on it is going to look gross it looks gross with no color on it. Um, when I started doing this, I didn't rip the holes in it, but I learned that when I did it on like a giant scale, 
the holes looked really, really gross, especially when I could do big ones, fill them with blood and just let it drain. Um, and what was, so that was, that was, that was just uh, latex, coffee grounds, and then latex on top of that, right? Yep. That was it. That's it. Okay. Latex, coffee grounds, latex in one go. Don't let the latex dry until you've done all those three steps. And then it's going to dry from white to that gross, yucky color, that green color. That's when you know you're ready to start pulling at it and making holes. Um, and you don't even have to, it looks nasty on its own. Right. Um, so that's that's just a personal preference that I like to do. I can't unsee the face now. <laughs> <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um but yeah, that's a really, really stinking easy way to make a really cool special effect. Um the more ground you cover, the crazier it looks. And right. it's so easy. Start smelling coffee again. Or maybe <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's something. I'll fun take there. it. I'll take it. <laughs> All right, so if you guys, I know there's Riker left in there, but if you guys uh, have any questions or any comments or you, know, you want us to see us do anything, let us know. Um, what do you want to do? You want to do something? Give me a bru like a bruise, maybe? Absolutely. Just like, so, a, just like basic bruise? Absolutely. Bruises are super easy and super subject to personal preference, really. Hey, um, Riker. If you Google a picture of a bruise, you get 10, 10 different looking bruises, right? Because mm -hmm. there's all different stages of healing, so you really can't mess it up. Um, let me, I'm going to come behind you if that's okay yeah so i don't need to be better no you're okay. okay you're good um what i like to do is start oh i'm so sorry you're fine start with the darkest parts and blend out so like for instance like a black eye you want me to give you a black eye or you'd rather do me a bru do a bruise up here Just oh you can't really see yeah, huh? yeah. yeah um so for instance i like this dark color for actual bruises because it does look more purple you'll notice if you put it on with a brush it blends really easily i like to use my fingers for this or a sponge but it blends straight in yeah I'm pushing hard. Sorry. I get fine. So that's, so it looks black, but it's mm -hmm. not black. Exactly. It comes out like a purplish color. Okay. And then for the different depths of a bruise, you know, you can take that same color and a spot and blend it less, leave it more opaque. Sorry, I'm looking at the camera while I'm doing this. Yeah. So well, see. that looks like a bruise right there. Yep. So, so it very, it's like variations of. Exactly. That's uh, all the same color that you're looking at. Every piece of that is the this, exact same color, just blended heavily. One's darker more heavily. than the other. Exactly. Um, the yellow is wonderful for this. I like to take just a little bit on my fingers. And of course, like I said earlier, bruises are going to become yellow on the lightest parts of the bruise first. So I like to go just around the edges. Looks super dark. And then we do. That just makes it pop out even more. Exactly. I see the yellow in there. Yeah. But it's it's all subject to your preference. I'm noticing now that this part is like not very blended. But you get the gist, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and then the sponges are going to do the same thing, obviously. So that would, so if you're doing around the eye, you would do the same thing. Just mm -hmm. be aware of the eye. Exactly. So I messed it up, but I mean, oh, you're okay. We got the gist of it. Some red in there. Like it really is just kind of blend. If you want to blend more, keep blending and then add spots of less, less blended. Right. How many times can I say the word blend? <laughs> but that's really all it is. Like that's, that's all it is. It's just blending. So um, black eyes, I like to do like, you start in the, you're going to start like in, I won't actually do it, but like you start in the inner corner, work your way kind of down, um, high and tight with the, with the dark and the inner corner, typically with black eyes, I feel like you see more in the inner corner, a lot of darkness in the inner corner and then on the lower part of the top lid and then blend up and down. So dark in the center, light all the way down and all the way up. But or pull some pull, if you're doing it or your makeup artist is doing it, pull some pictures off of Google like yes. black eye. Cannot stress that enough. And just um, kind of go off of that. I almost always have a picture sitting next to me, especially for black eyes for yeah. some reason. Like it just helps me to stare at them. How many times I'd save a picture and say, Tess, I need you to do this and that. Perfect. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Send, me the, send yeah. me the photo. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, for the, yeah, there's nothing wrong with having reference photos everywhere. In fact, before we did this, I was Googling pictures of black eyes. So, um, anything, <laughs> anything, uh, like, like blood splatters or just like stuff quick, like you would give, absolutely give, uh, you know, I know that doesn't take very long. Absolutely. Um, one thing like these, these stipple sponges, like I cannot sing their praises enough for blood splatter. It never fails. And art or an actor will come up to me at like, we open at seven, it's 702, and they're like, I don't have any blood on me. Um, dipping this in, see, I got I got quite a bit. Let me see. I got quite a bit on there. Yeah. Keeping it. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize you oh, were I can, I can, turn, I can turn a little bit. Where you got a better spot? 
Yeah. So you can go by the batteries, maybe? Spot. Yeah, sorry. I'm looking in front of me, not in the... Right. Yeah. <laughs> but if we, you know, kind of pile it in and spread it out, just like I would on any other wound, turn turn the sponge around so you don't get any harsh edges, fold it up. I can. There's nothing that can do blood splatter quicker than a stipple sponge, in my opinion. Right. Um, sometimes... And keeping it clean, too, because you're not... You're not, not splatting it. I mean, it's not in a spray bottle. Mm -hmm. You're not getting it on the other artists, actors around you. Yeah. So, like, it is so simple. That's it. Um, and another thing, if somebody doesn't have stipple sponges, if you don't want to buy stipple sponges, something that I used to do, take, like, a regular makeup wedge. It's like, obviously, it's got these harsh lines that we do not want because it would just look, it would look like a square. Well, it right. would look like a square. If you take just your fingers and pull all the sharp edges off. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a makeshift stipple sponge. It's almost like the, uh, you know, they, they, spit, they set up the sponge kits for doing your house paint and your walls. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they have different textures mm -hmm. for the sponges. Yeah, so in a pinch, let's see where we at. Sorry, in a pinch. That'll do it too. Yeah, it's close. So just for like the world's fastest blood. Right. In a go, in a hurry. I can do this while I'm walking and it still looks decent. It doesn't look like I just took a sponge and smeared it on. Now, do you ever use just standard Fake blood? Absolutely. Like um, typically, so for instance, I cannot believe I didn't bring fake blood. <laughs> the one thing, but for something like this, I would maybe drip a little bit from it. Right. Um, runny. It's more runny. Yes, runny fake blood, like the kind you buy in a bottle. Yeah. Um, Walmart brand, or I try to stay away from Walmart brand because I don't know the toxic. I'd rather buy something that's safe and not. Yes. I don't know. They say it's not toxic. Right. You know. It is. I've used the Walmart brand. It works fine for me, but the logistics it is smarter to invest in a better one. I'm sure. And some are thicker than others. Some are thicker than others. Even with with the cheaper brands, which. Is pretty much all I buy. If it's safe and it's cheap, we're good. Right. Uh, they might vary in consistency bottle to bottle, like even the same brand. Right. Um. So I tend to lean towards the thicker ones because the running ones do tend to be cl like clearer, more translucent. Um. They don't look quite as real to me. Um. I use runny fake blood so little that I forgot to bring it. <laughs> so. <laughs> and, um, and some blood will leave your stain your skin and clothes and yes. clothes so you got to be careful yeah um with what you get none of what i've used aside from liquid latex today is going to stain and ruin anything um i've gotten this stuff all over all kinds of things i've never had an issue so um okay. and it wipes right off your skin as well um yeah runny fake blood it has its place in my opinion but like maybe a drip here and there because I like to stick with more realistic, um, you know, realistically, it's not going to run. As, so right. one and it's that deep. So it's that's a totally a matter of personal preference, though. Yeah, yeah that's because I know we've been through several different brands. And yes. there's a pinch. You're like, I ah, just grab some from Walmart. Right, grab some on your way. <laughs> or Al, just try right. it. Anybody going to Spirit today. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, okay, we'll, we'll use it, but... Um, and they can buy gallons of it. You can. I know some actors like to cover themselves. Cherry style. You know? Yeah, you know? absolutely. Like Which, uh... that, in my opinion, that's where it has its place. Yes. <laughs> and things like that. Um, when I try to do the more realistic things, whether it's whether it takes me three minutes or thirty minutes, I typically don't don't grab for the, for right. the liquid blood. Um, how about like um like a quick scratch or a quick stitch or something? Sure, absolutely. Cool. Um, one thing that I like about, let me get my Vaseline, about the scar wax is it is so versatile. Um, another way that a lot of people like to do cuts, like I did the two, I call them snakes. Right. I did the two snakes and blended them in separately so that it was nice and like gaping. Mm -hmm. But another way people like to do it, excuse me, while I make my snake. It almost rolls like Play-Doh. It does roll like, it rolls like sticky Play-Doh. Okay. Um, let me put some spirit gum down. Where do you want to go? Go back there behind the... Right here? Yeah, perfect. And you can see how little of this I'm using, like next to none. It's, like it's going to cover it's like that. Light just of... a light. Yeah. And the maker. Yeah, that, that one, I can't, mm. I can't stop seeing the face either. I know, I hate it. <laughs> It's cute, but I didn't mean to do it. It's like a baby group. Mm -hmm. Bloody group. So like on this one, for instance, I'm going to try to do this in real time, but while I'm talking, I'm slow. Um, I only pushed down, like blended down one edge. On this one, I'm going to blend down both. Okay. So that I'm only blending the edges. I'm not pushing the whole center into your skin. Right. So it's still got some still difference. rays. Right. Um, and then we've got this nice little ridge. What I would do at this point, which I don't know that I even have anything to do it with. Something sharp and small. Like a pencil? Yep. Would that work? You okay with that? <laughs> you can find a 
find one that's shopping. Doesn't matter which one you get. Use a pen. Yeah. Okay with that? So <laughs> we're using a pen today. Um, well, I got yeah, it. it does not matter. Um, I'm gonna take it down the center of that trick. Keep my hands out of the way. Down the center and just pull it out. Okay. See? Yeah. Wonderful. All right. So now there's a hole in the middle of it. And if you want, like on camera, it looks really, really raised. So I would maybe blend, you know. When I say blend, I don't mean sit here for 10 minutes. I mean, literally do that. Right. Took me four seconds. Smooth um, it out a little bit. Exactly. Just smooth it. And then repeat the process. So okay. you cover with latex if you want it to last all night. I find it easier to paint over with latex on it as well to blend paint in. Um, let it dry for a minute or so. Paint it and you're done. But you can see there's like a valley in there now. Right. So that's where I would put my dark color and my fake blood. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. And I think your pen is salvaged. So all right. right there. <laughs> is there anything else you want to try? Um, I don't know what it would be, but I'm open to your suggestions. Okay. I will do whatever, whatever. Rikers, anything that you want to see done? Um, I know uh, Q line actors get more. They get more detail. Yes. So like the people through the house, you know, we've we've made the mistake of like doing complete blood work makeup on somebody and put them in a red room yes right yes which kind of just like drowns out all the work that you did 100 percent. you can't see any can't of it see anything. <laughs> might as well have done nothing yeah so we like to use a lot of natural light mm -hmm. in those rooms mm -hmm. because then you know whether it's a dim light or a flickering mm -hmm. light or something that, mm -hmm. that could be seen yes so people that are trying to figure out what they want to do with their uh, they're actors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I know a lot of actors don't like wear masks. Sure. Right. Sure. Is there what do you what do you do a lot like if so like for the Dead Factory? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it dark eyes and blood splatter? Pretty and, much. And um, like you know stuff like that. Pretty it's much. Like, well, what do I want to do with you? Because we have no matter what you do, you schedule all your actors. You have somebody brings a friend in. <laughs> yeah. Or <laughs> so uh, or a mom somewhere. needs to bring her daughter with her that night. Yeah. So you're trying to think. Well, what can we where can we do with her? What can we put her? I like uh, my go-to, which <laughs> they love this. They're expecting something really fancy, but we got to do something on the fly. Yeah. Um, dark, dark around the eyes. I use my water-based Mayron. It's called Paradise Paint by Mayron. Any water-based paint will work, but that, theirs is by far my favorite. Um, dark around the eyes. I blend it on the edges so it doesn't look like I took a stamp <laughs> and yeah. put it on their eyes. Right. Um, I like to drain it down some, so like I'll. I'll darken their eyes and then kind of drag it down nice and creepy. Um, and then I like I like the blood around the mouth. I think it looks feral. I think it looks neat. Um, right. But that, putting some dark around somebody's eyes, kind of using my brush to drag down and kind of elongate their eyes and putting maybe putting some blood around their mouth, all of that combined takes me way less than a minute. Right. It's so you, quick. Just use your so sponge easy. with that? Just... Yep, sponge, brush, or brush, I mean. Um, you can use sponge or brush around the eyes. I like to use my brush to, to kind of like drag down from the eye with some creepy little lines. If mm -hmm. that, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then take my stipple sponge and go to town around their mouth with some mouth-safe blood. Right. And we're good to go. Oh, darkness around their mouth as well. If you want to put like some black lipstick or black paint. Right. Um, Mayron Paradise paint is non-toxic. I have gotten it in my mouth on more occasions than I can count. Um, it's so simple to just throw throw some around. I know some people uh use like wrinkles. So like you're trying to make somebody old right? Yes. You go through and maybe darken up the wrinkles a lot. Yep. Um paint works for that. I'd rather use a bruise wheel. To be honest with you, that's not my strongest suit. Yeah. <laughs> Just to be honest. Right. Um, one thing that is so incredibly fast and arguably the most realistic product to use for wrinkle is called rigid collodion. Um rigid collodion is something you should absolutely test. Is it wrinkles of the skin? Yes. It tightens, it tightens skin. it up. It looks like a okay. scar when it's dry. Okay. So I don't have it or I'd show Right. Um, it is something you should absolutely test like on your wrist and let it dry and see how your skin reacts to it first. It's very strong. Um, but basically what you do is follow the natural lines of wrinkles or a scar. If you want some, like I could draw a, a scar in the shape of a heart if I wanted to. It sets and tightens up the skin, makes it nice and shiny like a scar and tightens it up. Um, it works exactly the same for wrinkles. Let it dry between layers and that is it. You do not have to paint it. 
You don't have to do anything. They use it in Hollywood stuff. Yes. Though. Yeah. Um, but but it's not expensive and it's easily accessible too. Right. So I mean, I can buy it online. Um, anybody can buy it, but that is by far my favorite. Of course, you can paint it if you would like to go the extra mile, but you do not need to. You can very easily make somebody look look very old and wrinkly very quickly. <laughs> right. So that's kind of I feel like maybe a more advanced product, but a very very easy advanced product. Right. Well, that's that's good. I mean, you don't need people starting out. You don't need a whole lot. No. You know, no. you don't, you don't need, even if you wanted to start off in smaller bottles because mm -hmm. you didn't have, you know, you didn't have the funds or, but I think Tessa said she bought, you could buy everything for like what, 170? It was 170 um, when I added it all that's together. All the, that's all the big bottle stuff. Yep. So that's all my brushes, all my sponges, simple sponges included, um, liquid latex, scab blood, a large tub of scab blood. It's going to last me all season, if not more. Same with the scar wax. That's two several actors. Uh, oh, many. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. A many, many, many faces you can get through um, because less is more. Right. Um, a large tub of scar wax, which again is going to last arguably even longer than the scab blood. My bruise wheel, my Vaseline, everything. And coffee grounds, you got those. Yeah, you got those. Same you drink you know, coffee. Like, but... Things like a banana, things like tweezers, thing, you know, your tools, your everyday tools are things you probably already have. Right. Deb, um, so you popped in. Do you have any questions i know i don't know if you saw the rest of it on facebook uh tessa doing some makeup it's just latex and where's your where's your blood your blood yeah. stuff you can go back and watch the video she shows you how to do it it's the fresh scab most superior blood in my opinion yeah i've been using ben nye since i first started me too just dabbling me too i know. started even practicing this like i pushed in 13 or 14 years ago um the person that i saw doing it was using ben nye then i ordered it and I've never stopped never gone back. It. Yeah. No, I've had others, you know, at the haunt or otherwise that I've messed around with, and sure it worked. But this, by far, in my opinion, has been the easiest to use as far as actually working with. It's not going to run. It's not going to coagulate prematurely. Um, and I just think it looks real. So and you can do so much with it. Yes. Um. So like your dad, mm -hmm. he has he has the big cut across his forehead block, mm -hmm. then he's got the staples all the way across because he mm -hmm. was a, his brain's been operated on. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so, I, I know the photo. I I don't have it, but that's okay. I have a good one. Um, what this past season I started. Was that putting? He was on our on mm -hmm. the marketing that I did for this class. Uh huh. So he's the guy on there. So, for instance, can we see that? Is that gonna is that gonna come through? I'm gonna try to get it to work. So there's his lack of brain. There it is. Um, oh. that's okay. There's it looks like a lot of scab blood. Really, it's just a lot of paint under the scab blood to make it nice and dark, and then a layer of scab blood that I then took my stipple sponge and pulled up at, push down, pull up, push down, pull up, push down, pull up. This is where I did use runny blood, as you can see. Um, I put more on this than I would have liked to because he demands it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it does. It Mark, does Mark's look good. Mark's yeah. He's like, oh, okay, yeah, give me some more blood. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay. Um, but that's one of my favorite looks I've ever done, and I like to do it every single night, so I don't ever get tired of that one. Yeah. Um, that is everything in that is everything I did this with. So maybe. how long does that take you to do? Um, his takes me in total, not counting dry time for his latex. That's about five to ten minutes alone. Um, his whole look probably probably twenty minutes. Okay. Nothing too crazy. Right. Um, I, yeah, between maybe 15 and 25 minutes altogether. So make sure your actors are there early if they need yes. complex work done. He beats me there every night. Yeah. <laughs> he's ready to roll. He's he's incredibly dedicated to his craft. So yeah, um, he'd sleep there if you let him. Oh, he would. Yeah. He probably has. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I love I love the big the big projects like that. But like we were talking about, it's not for every actor in the haunt. It's going to cost a lot of time and money, to be honest, to right. put, put all these products on all these people who aren't even in, in a well-lit room. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah we, we always mix between masks or, or hoods mm -hmm. or where you can't even see their face. You know, airbrush like... is a good thing for that. Um, I'm not good at airbrush. <laughs> um, Jasmine at our, at our haunt is good at airbrush. Yeah. And that's, it's a very quick solution. It's it's an investment for sure. Um, and it's a process to learn like anything else. Do you want to sit back? I don't know if you're, are you oh, done sure. up here? I, I, if you want me to be. Yeah, yeah. we'll just take, take questions. And, sure. But yeah, that's um, the, uh, I've seen in a pinch just taking black paint and just yep. throwing it on your hands and you're, and you're, you know, and just breaking up your sil silhouette. Mm-hmm. 
Absolutely. Just break stuff up. Absolutely. Darkening your feature. Like I don't have it with me because I, to be honest, I don't use it very much, but like a black face powder, like regular, like black eyeshadow, black eyeshadow, right? $2 black eyeshadow from Walgreens to darken up, you know, like your cheekbones, make you look nice and hollow. Just throw something in the light. Down your neck. Yeah. Oh, they're just going to make your cheek, cheekbones up. In the light, does it look beautiful and like well-crafted? No. <laughs> But in the dark, does it do the job yet? Right. I've gone through our haunt and many others with so many different groups of people, whether they're friends or family or just customers that I don't know and I've followed behind for whatever reason. And those actors still get really good scares. I mean, they yeah. it doesn't matter what you look like if if you're doing doing your job and, yeah. and not well at room. Well, I've been just in my hoodie before. <laughs> like, customers. <laughs> yeah. You know, you throw your hood up and you take your flashlight or throw it, the, throw it in their face mm-hmm. and they're like, Mm -hmm. I focus all of my attention on the actors that are either very in your face and and you can actually see them in a room that has light um, or the cue line, you know, ones that somebody's going to actually stand there and have a conversation with. Right. um, Where you can see every, every. And we buy, we end up buying just black makeup for the, for everybody because a lot of them masks. Just do your own black. Here's Mm -hmm. black. Get your black ready. So you have plenty of mirrors up Mm -hmm. so they can just do their own eyes. Anything you can see through the mask. Yeah. Just it's black tube cream paint. That's a pet peeve for me. When I see a good mask, mm-hmm. I say, I can see your eyes. Mm-hmm. No, you got to blend it in. Like, I can see your eyeliner. Yeah, <laughs> I can see your, you got to black that in. Yeah, or absolutely. or having, uh, even have your actors wear gloves or yes. just do something with their hands just to dirty them up. Because, That's, yes. Or Sorry. get rid of the, get rid of the Nike tennis shoes mm-hmm. and, and throw on some black or some work boots or some black shoes. Yes, I have a lot of, that's another thing I have a lot at the last minute is people run up like, my hands are too clean. My hands are too clean. So I'll take like a big brush like this and just dip it. Can you see that? Dip it in yep. some water. Some dip it in some dark paint. Just, whoop, just all over their hands. Angry. Takes, takes. I'm not exaggerating, 10 seconds. And it makes a huge difference Yeah. when the haunts lot. I'm all about detail too. So when people like, coming up to me, I'm like, do I look okay? I'm like, your hands. <laughs> right. Your hands and your Nike. gloves on. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, um, if you guys don't have any more questions, uh, if you missed this, Deb or anybody else watching, go back to the very beginning and see how we did the latex and the blood. Not a lot of, not a lot of materials. Easy effect. You can carry this through whatever you do: cuts, bruises, wounds. You can do punctures. I know Tessa has some pictures of with a pencil, you know, stuck. So when you do stuff like that, is that just like? More the wax. A lot of scar wax. Scar wax and just stick it in place. A lot of scar wax. Another thing that a lot of people, which I probably should have mentioned this earlier, a lot of people like to learn with, um, without scar wax. And it's, it's not a lot of people's first step. It was mine. And I do think it looks more real. Um, but you can also use toilet paper, paper towels. Oh. You can drench it in latex and right. make my little snakes I was talking about. You can do the exact I've same thing. YouTube videos on doing that. Yeah. I think I might even used that before at one mm-hmm. time. Like I'll, at any given point, you will see us with like a roll of paper towels rolled into strips that I can just dip in latex, throw on, bunch up and let it dry. Um, I like the scar wax a lot better because it, you can like, you'll, you saw me like push it into yeah. his skin. It looks very naturally raised instead of just flat, flat, flat. And then there's a there's paper towel. <laughs> right. Um, that, which that, but that's what it's made for. So that's the point. But, um, if. I'm convinced if you can learn with paper towels and toilet paper, you can do anything because I struggle with that more than I'd scar wax, to be honest. It takes a lot. You have to get it on right. It does. And many, many, many times I have tried a look on a haunt night, um, got it halfway put on and hated it and taken it off and started over with something different, Um, which if you're good at that, applaud you because I'm not. But it is it is a way to to learn how the latex works, how it dries, how it how you relate it. So. Also, in a pinch, I've just taken latex and put it on my face and then just picked at the latex off. and then cut, put holes in it and then went through with the black and mm-hmm. dot the black and then put the scab stuff on it, mm-hmm. which, I mean, for what you're doing and if you're not, you're not like Sarah up front, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. it's fine. I mean, you yeah. kind of look fine all right. And it's like, oh, that was pretty cool. And it just took me five minutes to do that. Exactly. You know, so. And this special effects, especially like when I was first starting out, it is 100% trial and error. Yeah. Like you'll try something and be like, wow, I hate the way that looks. Right. Never do it again. Yeah. Like it just, and that's me with, with 
toilet paper. <laughs> yes, yeah. I hate it. So, no. like, I can't. When you found when you found scar wax, I mean, so... I think I started backwards is my yeah. problem. Yeah. Um, for sure. But you know, if you you know, if there's even things that other people so like, you know, the order I do things in might not work. So I just try to do it in the way that things can dry appropriately. I can blend things on top of other things. The main reason that I do it in the order I do it in is so that I can blend colors on top of other materials. So. Right. But it's a personal preference. Well, I think. I think when you're doing a haunt, you're crunched for time, you're crunched for money, you might only have one makeup artist, mm -hmm. um, and you're, I know not everybody's into the blood and gore, we'll go into more classes eventually, but starting off, blood and gore is kind of easy and fast. Yep. That's why a lot of people do it, because mm -hmm. um, you make it look good, you make it look easy. Now, some people are in the, the maybe not have the natural talents to, but just keep, like you said, keep practicing, experimenting, mm -hmm. grab your mom, your dad, do it on your arm. Yeah. You know, so. I learned on myself. I learned doing it on myself. I didn't have anybody model for me. Um, actually, like until you, I met you. Yeah. <laughs> I started like, doing like this. this. Yeah. You want to, you want to come and work like, at the bed factory? I was so proud of when I first started out. Looking back, I realized how far I've come with literally no different materials, just more practice. Right. I'm using the same materials today that I started with over a decade ago. And the difference in my work then and my work now is incredibly dramatic. It's so, so different. You don't have a layer. And it's, another, exactly. It's just, just practice. Bringing like, in, yeah. That's all. So, not well, that I'm a professional by any means, but I've definitely come a long way. So. Well, you do a better job than I do. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys for attending. Thank you. If you um, have any questions, uh, Tessa will be tagged in this post. She is in our Haunt Master group, so I'm sure she'll be able to answer any questions over on Facebook. Absolutely. If anybody wants any links to anything, I can provide as well. And if you are a Haunt Master member, you will be getting this video in an email within a few days, so you can go back and watch it over again. And then you can show your scare actors how to do it and have them watch it. All right, well, we're signing off for the evening. Thanks, Riker. Thank, Thank you. Have a good evening. This podcast episode sponsored by Scarit Badges. Get your Scare Badges at ScareBadges.com. Also sponsored by Haunter's Toolbox. Take your haunt to the next level at Haunter'sToolbox.com. Thank you for listening to Haunt Topic Radio. Please leave a comment wherever you found this podcast. Each comment you leave will help spread the word to other haunters around the world. See you next time.